Hi Fox, in this video I will help you to enter so-called natural state of unity of the body and soul. The stage that requires open-mindedness and a creative initiative from you. So be ready for surprises. You have to be ready for any surprises because discovery is always a surprise. This is a routine that has nothing routinish about it because in that routine you have to keep your ears and if you like eyes open. The most difficult problem rather with professional singers with successful careers who made psychological separation of the voice, personality and singing. That separation starts rather with warm up and continues further. So by the time you're just about to perform your body and mind are heavily separated. Then you try to get them unity kind of through effort, but it really never pays off. You, you don't know how to do it. You don't know how to uh, unite it something that you already separated. So that makes us think that we might have a wrong approach to voice and to music altogether, because though you love vocal music and love singing, you probably never, I repeat, never had a true experience of love during your singing in time of singing. I mean, that's something different. Of course, if you're, if you're watching this video, you probably love voice, uh, you love vocals, and you love singing. But be honest with you, did you experience real, true love and pleasure when you are singing? Ask yourself that question. So you see, that's why the moment you start preparing yourself for the concert or just preparation for your future program or just warming up it's very important how you approach this you approach this mechanically just you know it's a physical warm-up that's all I have to do or you approach it as the whole being that is very important that's why I say in my previous videos and I have special uh, videos that are dedicated to pre-warm ups and I very distinctively say that pre-warm ups are individual tricks and you know sometimes even my students don't understand and they just pick up my uh, pre-warm ups and just mimic me it's fine but you have to look into yourself have to experiment with your voice not dangerously of course not getting uh, to the high C. What usually tenors, for example, are experimenting with is how can they reach these high notes, which is absolutely, totally wrong. Because you're missing the whole point of the technique. You may reach this high C eventually, but it will be so discontinued, so disconnected from your rest of the voice that uh, it won't be a really a great note, you know? So, this is not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about an individual effort to discover what kind of tricks will lead you towards opening up your voice, opening up your throat, getting a great resonance, and at the same time being the whole being at that moment. You and voice are not, not separable. You know? Well, I'm not talking about some kind of mythology here. That's what happens in reality. When a great singer sings, he is not separated from his voice or from his body. He is one whole great human being. That's why we get such vibes from such a singer. So you can see the focus, but you see the natural focus of these singers. You know, you don't see the effort really. Start with pre-warm ups, and I again I repeat. Every singer has to develop on the principles of pre-warm-up, which I described before, his own individual warm-ups. They are most valuable. None of mine, none of the Pavarotti's, none of the great singers or great teachers' warm-ups routine. This is another story. You have to do it. 
That's what Caruso says. If you don't experiment with your voice, you're not going very far. What is important to upcondition yourself from many, many things, but one, chiaroscuro sound. Because if you're a classical singer, you need to produce chiaroscuro sound. So, let's say, you don't start your warm-ups if you're a classical singer with because that's not a voice that you want to get in later. If you're a crooner, that's another story. But if you are a classical singer, you have to start your pre-warm-up with only one condition. You have to produce chiaroscuro sound. Now, I have to tell you something very important. I know most of you who are attending my lessons are either studying with someone else, totally studying by themselves, and I have to tell you, this is very dangerous. Even when you send your vocal uh, examples, it's not very clear in recording whether you do have real chiaroscuro or not, because as you see, as my own experience with videos and all the stuff, even with a good quality video and good quality sound, you still might have an illusion that you have a chiaroscuro sound. Because chiaroscuro sound is not just the dark and bright, it's a proper mix of these two in one. And experienced ear has to tell you. So if you cannot afford for some reasons to have regular lessons, you still need a consultation once in a while to come to a classical singer, classical I repeat, an opera singer, if you really want to be an opera uh, star in the future, you have to come to them and ask them. I mean, it costs you probably more than just regular lesson, but you need to be checked out because recording is a lie. So if I produce, for example, I, I, now I will willingly produce a sound that is not chiaroscuro by the classical and operatic standards, but you might feel that it's still chiaroscuro because Carmel lies to you. Like now, Let's see, again, Caro Mio Ben. Caro Mio Ben. You see, this voice has scuro definitely and has a little chiaro, but the camera compression makes it equalized. So you can really judge what kind of sound I am really using right now. Real chiaro scuro will sound more intense. You see the intensity of the sound, and again, camera doesn't give you the real distinction between uh, the, the first sound and the second sound. So, chiaroscuro is the only condition we have to do it uh, because that's the sound we're going to. Try to experiment with different sounds having in mind just one thing, chiaroscuro. Chiaroscuro is an appoggio developed one register voice that contains chest, passaggio, head voice in one, trinity presence, if you like the word trinity. In pre-war maps, body and soul of the voice is getting united. If you don't start to unite your body and voice before you start vocalizing, that is very difficult with vocalizing. I'll tell you why. Because vocalizing, the whole memory, the whole situation of vocalizing gets us into a kind of a formal mood, standing rigidly and trying to impress someone, and you lose this natural fun with your voice. I mean, some of you will lose it. I would say rather most of you will lose it. So in order not to lose that fun relationship with your voice, you have to start your warm-ups with fun, with freedom, with open mind. Of course, I again say do not experiment with high notes. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about you getting, you getting into the voice or the voice getting into you so when you start pre-war maps, your body and soul are getting together. And that's what is all about relaxed focus. One needs a tremendous freedom from conditioned exercises. You can watch my detailed videos on uh, pre-war maps, like warm-up philosophy, pre-war maps, stretching by Franco Tanelli, or you can see pre-war maps articulation stable larynx appoggio by Franco Tonelli also. Now, interesting thing that I never introduced before is 
one of those little tricks uh, to more unite your body and soul. Those tricks I called sloppy exercises. So pre warm-ups, well, again, I said you can watch my pre warm-ups videos that I posted. I don't want to post another pre warm-up here because, again, I said the pre warm-up basically is an idea of you getting your own one. So you have to get the principle and then start it with your own self and you know, keep it secret if you like, you know, if you discover something or share with others, it's upon your personality. But that will be your own very important experience. Sloppy exercises are the same in essence as vocalizers. Listen, la, but very relaxed and bring great fun to some who like to discover, you know, their voices. Um, to others, they just may look stupid, like stupid tricks. Now, what is the sloppy exercise? So if you sing an exercise, like I did, like a scale, uh, try to be correct on pitch and everything, you know, you again enter a little formal state that you have to think too much, a little bit, be precise. So before you really enter more conditioned state, you can do instead of ah, you know, ah, which is just a sliding, and just having great resonance sensations, opening your throat, and rest, a very natural way, that he, and you have a pleasure of doing it because resonance always a great resonance gives you a great pleasure of singing. When you're singing on resonance, whether big voice or small, it doesn't matter, it always has a, like a physical pleasure. When you're singing on effort and on, on forcing, it never gives you any pleasure. It may be in your mind and later on, oh, I'm an opera singer, you know, I love this, what I'm doing, yeah. Yes? Is it true? Is it true that you love what you're doing? Is it true that when you're singing on stage, you truly enjoy it? Or you just want to get through it? Be honest with you on that too, because if you're not honest with that and you're still something wrong with your singing, that could be a problem. Uh, take any exercise, any, uh, take any scales and sing them sloppily, like you're having fun. Nobody's controlling you, there's no teacher, there's no conservatory, there is no watching board of commission that examines how, how well you're doing this just for yourself discover your resonance through the sloppy exercise and when you feel that you have a disconnection in pre warm ups uh, you can continue with scales more formal scales and then you have to watch of course now the pitch and be very precise by the time you enter this you already have fun and so this next exercises that will be uh, formal exercise ah, it won't cause you any uh, you know um, uh, tremendous effort to do when you sing those scales and exercises be creative even when you sing formal exercises when you let's say you're done with uh, pre-warm ups you're done with sloppy exercises as now you really want to get a real good exercise even there have fun with it okay try to remember how you had fun with the other sound have fun with it it's very important don't make it so formal try to sing them a cappella you don't need always the piano to, to, to accompany you in that try to sing them a cappella and try to be in control of what you're doing not mechanically for example even let's take this exercise you can sing it this way, which is uh, very rhythmical, but you can do it this uh, more musical way and uh, to try to be in control of what you're doing. You need a relaxed mind to improvise a little bit with this, you know. I'm not expecting you to be a jazz musician and to improvise on the spot, but taking the same scale you can do it and written first. Okay? And the second time you can do it with ralentando. And when you do it 
it slowly actually you, you start noticing some things that you never notice when you do it fast so it's very important for you to also have in mind just before approaching an area and especially if that is a little bit challenging area my personal view you should never approach an area that you're not ready for and I know many of you do that I know you just uh, uh, I have some friends on you on YouTube amateur singers that they're not ready to sing Caro Mio Band but they're already trying to sing Elucia Malestelle, even Celeste Aida guys you're only damaging your voice you will be there but just learn and prove that you can be in control of a simple antique aria if you cannot be in control, total control of simply antique aria explain me how can you be in control singing Verdi arias, very difficult arias Puccini, Verdi and other composers you cannot convince me that you can do it before going to an aria take this text print it before you separately from music print it and try to speak or if you memorize the words even better try to speak it as the drama actor would do it so recite it recite it but don't recite it in a normal way recite it in the chiaroscuro way for example aria parmi veder le lagrime right before singing parmi veder le lagrime before doing this say something parmi veder le lagrime try to open your throat so it's less challenging parmi veder le lagrime it's the first stage then the second stage try to sing on the single note and so the slowly approaching to the phrase and that phrase will be less intimidating if you do the way I suggest right now so again what I say take the print the whole aria text separately unless you remember it and try before singing an aria just read the text understand what you're singing all about and then put the phrase by phrase like a drama actor that brings you a tremendous ease later on because as we know not only the vocals but the words and articulation brings some difficulties to singing some singer can reach even now can sing high B flats and even high C's when it comes to an aria which has a, just a G he has trouble what's the problem? I mean I can sing high C why does I have a problem with G? A G is a passaggio note of course but unless it's, it's a vocal problem you can have also a problem linked to articulation or improper articulation so when if you articulate parmi veder le lagrime you see my, my, my and not parmi veder le lagrime if you articulate that appoggio way that the energy comes from below and not from your jaw and tongue then it's a great articulation you're getting used to it through separate exercise so that gets you more close to to the real uh, connection with it with an aria you're singing the whole idea by the time you're approaching an aria your voice should not be felt as some foreign body an inseparable part of you voice and you are the same not only physically but psychologically this is called being in the moment of now you cannot achieve this state you can only enter it this approach will help you to enter the state of a total focus on something called relaxed focus that means also focus without effort many of you who are familiar with state sometimes uh, can call it inspirational state because it comes and it goes without asking our permission those who are not familiar with the state and always try to get it through mostly mechanical vocal approaches may also experience it by went through it without noticing it and even condemning it 
in their mind conditioned that everything good should come through effort. Even some voice students have chosen vocal fa, not because it's naturally easy for them, but because it needs some effort, and effort is the only way they respect. Now I'll give you an interesting example from my own uh, practice as, as a teacher. Years ago, I had a, a very, very talented, uh, musically talented, a very nice uh, student of mine who uh, she wanted to study more of a classical voice. And so when she came to me, she had a very good ear and uh, she can sing on pitch, but she had a tiny voice, a very tiny voice. I mean, this voice is some choirs would, would have problem, classical choirs, of course, would have problem of accepting rather you know uh, voice was very nice but and in, in the case I would say well for the jazz music or for some grooming is, is great you can you can use this voice but she wanted to be a classical singer she always sang in choirs before it was the first experience of you know coming out so after two lessons I realized that her voice is ever going to stay very small if she keeps the same fa. And so I proposed her that maybe we can experiment a little bit with the voice because that voice I told her honestly, this is not a classical voice, we're not going anywhere with this voice. And she said, yeah, yes, okay, let's experiment. So I, we went there and uh, lower and then finally I found that her voice was a pretty solid mezzo-soprano. Now this, it, it was not a big, huge, operatic uh, suddenly voice of mezzo-soprano, of. Uh, Dolores Zajcik or something like this, no, but it was a, a classical voice with the potential, already with a little chiaroscuro and with the potential to be a classical voice. The other voice that she had, had no potential of being a classical singer. So when we discovered that, and I was really, oh, I was so happy because now the voice sounded very, very natural. And you know what? I saw in her eyes, she told me, but it's so effortless, it's so natural. You might think she is talking positive about these things. You see? No. It was not a compliment for her own self. This is what conditioned mind is all about. She thought that great effort, and she was using great effort while singing with this very high voice, uh, very small voice, she had an effort. And now when she entered so-called natural state, of natural resonance, she felt so easy. So she said, oh, I can do it myself. Why would I need a teacher? We had finished uh, six lessons uh, with her and I realized that psychologically she's conditioned, very much conditioned. And I cannot do it, I cannot push on her. Uh, nobody can push. I already gave her advice and I recommended her to study with uh, somebody else because there was no perspective, there was no understanding. Though, again, I repeat, she was a very nice girl, and uh, if she only had this open-mindedness about the, uh, her own voice, which sounded so beautiful effortlessly. So you see, uh, how important is the mind or conditioning? Rather, plays in this endeavor. You know, mind chooses the right or wrong instrument, not according to a nature of an instrument, but psychologically or by conditioning. This is a dangerous separation because when you separate voice psychologically it can lead to a poor finale. I spoke about different voices in one man's throat before when I was saying that the vocal fach will depend on the style and power one's producing uh, his or her voice. Like some dramatic tenors can be also very lyric basses, like me, I can be a lyric bass. Or some baritones can be ultra-lyric tenors. But within true voice power and style, voice has physical and not only psychological limitations. Because you cannot be a dramatic tenor and dramatic baritone at the same time. It's impossible. You can be dramatic tenor and lyric bass. Maybe they're freaks of nature, but what I know, and trust me, I have great experience with uh, big, huge, huge operatic voices, that never happens. So, thank you very much. I hope it helped you to set up your lessons the way they can be not just physical exercises, 
but revealing exercise of, of unification of your voice and body in one which makes your singing the great and you will always have pleasure of singing real pleasure not a virtual one not the one I love singing but when I'm singing I am so miserable <laughs> not that state no and kind of future maybe in the future I will be I love it you never love it in the future if you're not enjoying it right now you have to understand the separation and only when you are there standing on stage enjoying it tremendously in the moment of singing only then I can really call you a singer in a strict way thank you very much I hope you enjoy it try to open your mind leave your messages I you see I don't block any messages un unless they are just obscene so uh, I'm interested in your opinion until next time, it was Franco Tanelli, Science of Singing. Ciao. Carro